Well, collectors, here we are again. Uh, this is unboxing number 32, and um, today is the 2nd of May, so we've made it well into spring this year. And I hope you guys um, have good weather. Uh, those of you on the other side of the world in Australia and New Zealand, you're probably just getting your fall time. But um, we're welcoming the, uh, uh, the nice warm weather now. So um, I don't know what kind of an unboxing we're going to have today. It's just uh, a few things that came in and, uh, and I'll be happy to show you to them. And, show them to you and maybe there'll be something exciting I don't know but we'll see um, and before I before I start well before I start I gotta have a little pop here cheers to you all prost mm -hmm. yeah that's that's the best way to get started doing a video I'm telling you it really works good and then it doesn't hurt to, to have a little cigar or two at least get one going here. Sorry to waste your time, but uh, uh, all this goes into making a video. For some reason, you guys seem to like this smoking, drinking, and all the stuff I do, so uh, I may as well not quit then. Mm. Oh, that's good. All right. Now, before we get into things, um, I got somebody from... England that wanted to give me a little shout out, give him a little shout out. Uh, his name is James O'Leary and um, uh, he, co he collected uh, firearms for 15 years and um, he started watching these videos and uh, thought he would like to uh, start collecting daggers. So uh, I kind of feel uh, pretty good about that. That's a great thing. And he, um, he sent me a picture of a beautiful army he has with an ivory grip and an etched blade um, uh, presented to a uh, lieutenant and um, he even found uh, the gravestone of this particular person so it really I was going to say bring the brings the dagger to life but uh, you know the guy's dead but <laughs> but you know what I mean guys um, and that's really fun when you can do something that like that. Follow this man's whole career. He was a German engineer, and then he did immigrate to America in 1952, I think James said. Um, so all in all, a nice project, and I think he's looking for his next piece. Um, and James also has, um, he's got two little daughters. They're um, four and six years old. This is uh, Molly and Matilda. Hi girls. I hear that you watch these videos and like them. At least that's what your daddy tells me, but I don't believe it. You really don't like these. You're just you're just telling him that to make him feel good, aren't you? Oh, that's okay. I understand. So anyhow, best to you, James O'Leary, Molly, and Matilda. So with that, I want to just do a, a couple other things before I get into the unboxing. I get I get a lot of mail um, uh, about stuff that really doesn't have anything to to do with the, the hobby, um, but people want to know I don't know what kind of cigars do you smoke? What kind of liquor do you drink? Uh, what kind of lighter do you use? And it, it seems like every video somebody asks that. So I just want to take a minute. And uh, I've done some of this before. But I, I'll be a little redundant and do it once again. Uh, first of all, the only liquor that I drink at all. I don't drink Manhattans. I don't drink martinis. I don't drink beer. Uh, I'm not much on wine. But this is what I like. It's American whiskey. The cheapest rot gut stuff you can buy. $15.95 for that half a gallon. And I drink a bottle of this a week. And um, I hope that's not too much. It's, uh, uh, I don't know whether it is or it isn't. And I, I don't drink during the day, um, except I'm, when I'm making a video, because I need the, uh, the courage, you know, a little fortitude. I, I start drinking every night at 5 o'clock and usually around 6 or 6.30. Uh, it's dinner time and that's the end of it. 
So as many drinks I, that I can guzzle in that hour and an hour and a half, that's what I do because the bottle's empty at the end of the week and time to make that huge expense of $15.95 for another bottle. So that being said, that's what I drink and I drink it with Diet Pepsi. I love Diet Pepsi. It's about half and half. Half booze, half Diet Pepsi. So that's that. All right, and before I showed you before the kind of cigars I smoke, they're called De Nobilis, and um, they're the kind of cigars that the uh, Italian bricklayers used to smoke when I was a, a kid working construction. I can always remember those guys mixing cement or laying a piece of a brick or cutting a brick, and this rope hanging out of their mouth is what it always looked like. And, I always thought, oh God, why would anybody want to smoke something like that? But it's funny how you, when you get older, you start to uh, appreciate some things that uh, uh, you never would have when, when you're young. So I smoke regular cigars. Fuente is my favorite. Um, uh, I smoke a big one of them. Usually when I get up every morning at 6 o'clock, I go out on my front porch. If it's winter, I'm all bundled up. If it's, if it's summer, I'm not. And I... I take an hour every morning to do that, and I also have a cup of coffee with it, and I, uh, I like to read the newspaper too. And then I get back in, into the cellar here about 7, 7.15, and, and try to hit my uh, emails at that point. So, Denobolis, that's what I smoke. They're kind of hard to find, but if you want to, they're, they're pretty good, and, and uh, I recommend too, if you, if you want to try these things, they're, they're too long to smoke at one shot. Uh, it'll make you sick trying to smoke the whole thing. So I, just with a cutter, I cut them in half. I smoke half one, and it's very, very satisfying and doesn't seem to hurt me. You don't hear me coughing all over the place. I hope not anyhow. Okay, that's that. And then the last thing people keep asking me, what kind of a lighter do I use? Well, this is the first lighter, uh, well, it's I should say it's a lighter that I've been using since 1972 when I bought it. And it's a Dunhill lighter. It's just about wore out. It, they were always gold plated, but a lot of the gold finishes worn off of it. Uh, and it's pretty smooth. The design is gone, but it still works good. You lift it up and flick the, the, th the side thing here, which hits against a flint, and it holds gas. And this lighter, Dunhill, again, I've had it since 1972, and it's never, ever been repaired. And the reason for that is if you always keep gas in one of these lighters, it will never dry out if you let the, the gas uh, uh, go out and you don't refill it. Uh, there's a little O-ring inside that holds the gas in and the O-ring will dry out and then you got all kinds of trouble. And then I, I have another Dunhill that I got about 1992 and it was given to me by my friend Mike Polizzi. Mike used to work in a coin shop in uh, near Rochester area and uh, they had a lot of these things come in and um, he happened to be able to smuggle one out for me and uh, another beautiful Dunhill. The finish is still good on this one because I've only been using it about 20 years but uh, that's what they are. They always work. They're wonderful lighters. You don't want to leave them on the bar or somebody will steal them so you got to kind of look out for them. But I happily have, I've never lost one. Okay, well say you did lose one on the bar. You had it on the bar. Yeah. Now some, some guy down on the end has got the same lighter and you're missing yours. How do you know it's yours? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not going to get into a fist fight so he can have it. No, <laughs> you, got the, you got the initials, don't you? Oh, I do have initials. Yeah. Yeah, yeah on my old 72. I don't know whether they're still readable or not. Uh, I had them engraved on there so many years ago. Turn it a little uh, towards me. A little more towards me. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So there you are. It's That's upside down. It's Flip upside it. down? Yep. All right. How about now? The initials still show? You got it. TTW. I mean, 
Yeah, that's right. And it's a one. You know, it's a long time when you can wear a set of initials off of a lighter. So well, you got that right. So T T W. What's the T stand for in the metal? Um, that was my mother's maiden name, Townsend. There I you often go. thought that I, I had, I should have in my life. When I first started in my careers, uh, I should have used the name T. Townsend Whitman. <laughs> Sounds so sophisticated, doesn't it? <laughs> Too sophisticated. That's why I didn't use it. So, but anyhow, um, is that is that? Oh, one more thing. Yeah, you guys, you keep asking me about the watch that I wear. So I'm going to tell you about that. I don't wear this watch all the time. Uh, I have several other watches, but this is my favorite watch, and I, I think it's um, it's extremely um, extremely beautiful. And um, this watch was my father's watch, good old dad. And um, it's a it's a 14 karat gold watch, and um, I forget the name of the. Uh, it's a famous name. I can't read it, but maybe the camera can read it on there. It's. Can you see that, Ob? Yeah, but I can't read it. Can't read it. Oh. But it's it's a beautiful watch, and uh, and then on the on the back of it, uh, which I'm very proud of, it has my father's name, Edgar W. Whitman, engraved in there. And I'll tell you how how he got this watch. Uh, my father was in the um, heating business uh, right after the war, and then in the in the 1960s when uh, air conditioning came out and uh, uh, housing tracks were being built in our area, he had secured a lot of that work for his company, and uh, he sold so many General Electric air conditioners um, that he was the leading. Uh, salesperson in the area so GE gave my father this watch for that uh, <laughs> that accomplishment so uh, and what, what was his middle name then? Edgar Walter Walter oh actually had two middle names Edgar Walter Philip Whitman but he never used the uh, the Philip so that guys is um, is what this watch is that I wear I think it's a um, it's a very, very beautiful thing, and uh, you know, guys have asked me, "Oh, why don't you get a Rolex, Whitman? Those old—they're all out of style. Those watches." I don't know. I—I've bought several Rolexes in the past, uh, a couple for my wife and a couple for my kids, and uh, I just—I just think they're too big, and I'm not a great big person. Uh, if you're a big six-foot guy. You know, that big hunk of metal on your wrist, I guess, looks kind of good, but uh, I never liked them, so I, I stick with the, uh, the old school stuff. So, I think you heard enough about me. I'm sure you're anxious to see what came in in the UPS and the U.S. Post Office and uh, FedEx, and uh, we got a few boxes and we'll go to it, okay? Well, uh... I guess you heard enough about my background there with those little ditties, and uh, now we'll get to the serious part of the video. Here's to you. Mm. Let's see what we got here. Uh, just a small box, doesn't weigh much. Could be a scarf or something, I don't know. We'll see. We never know till we open them, guys. You're seeing it the first time, the same time as I see it. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it looks like a copy of an email. And uh, what the heck is this now? Oh, oh, cool. Yeah, this is something. Looks like a DJ knife. <laughs> it's a beauty too. Wow. Well, collectors, that's what we call a DJ knife, uh, and this is in remarkable condition. It's in backwards, isn't it? Uh, of course. <laughs> here we They're go always, again. <laughs> here we go again. They're always in backwards. Um, yeah, it's got the uh, the pinned in insignia here. 
That's what you want to see. These want to wiggle at the touch. See that how that wiggles a little bit? Um, if they're glued on, send it back. Um, the knives themselves are always this um, aluminum hilt uh, with the uh, black uh, checkered grip and the scabbard is painted with a uh, leather strap just the same as the larger HJ knives. And the, the blades are always plain like this, no ricasso, just a very simple cheaply made blade. Um, and they always have this little washer that's made out of brown felt. If it's leather, uh, it's somebody replaced it. It's got to be that brown felt, and it's behind the blade shoulders, so it was put on before the hilt was assembled. So this is a um, this is really a great example. It looks completely mint, and it's always been my theory. I may have told you this before that um, uh, as the war started and Hitler Youth knives were still in large demand because the uh, Hitler Youth boys were still being recruited all throughout the war. Um, so it's, it's my opinion that this is not a DJ knife as we've called it for years. DJs were the little boys under 10 years old. Uh, I feel that this is a simplification of the Hitler Youth knife. And this was what was made after 41, 42 in that era. Uh, and we'll also see these with no insignia on the scabbard uh, that are original. And it's my feeling that that was the one without the insignia was the final last one that was ever used. Uh, I have seen a picture of one of these in wear a few years ago and I've been driving myself crazy trying to find it because it was a Hitler Youth boy that was wearing this DJ knife. So anyhow, maybe we'll find it someday, but um, I like this very much. This is the best one of these I've seen in many years. The condition is um, is really, really good, so I'm, I'm happy to have that. Thank you, sir. That is a nice thing. It was a surprise, too. Nice surprise. Uh, let's see what uh, what we have next year. Um, this is a man from uh, Puerto Rico that I I've been dealing with a little bit here. I think we opened something from him in our last video. And as they say in uh, New Jersey here in Philadelphia, mispronouncing the name Puerto Rica. It's not, that's what we always heard, Puerto Rica. It's not Puerto Rica, it's Puerto Rico. A very nice place if you've ever had the pleasure to go there. Uh, they've had a lot of problems with hurricanes and uh, money problems with their government. And uh, uh, one of these days they'd like to be a, uh, an official state, but we'll see if that ever happens. I think right now it costs too much to try to make them an official state, but but let's see what we have here from from Puerto Rico. Let's see. Oh boy, this is really uh, really wrapped up here. Now we got a new Bob Burns box cutter here, so it's pretty sharp. So we should be able to get this open without my me cutting myself again. I forgot to buy a box of bandages too. After the last video, I was, I said to Debbie, we ought to get some bandages in here, and she said, oh, that's a great idea, and that's where it ended. So here we are. Ah, well, this is okay. Yeah, it's a, uh, uh, it's just a, a belt buckle, uh, but what's nice about it, it has the, um, it has the leather tab attached to it. Um, it's an RAD example, uh, and look at there. There's uh, it's even maker marked, and it has uh, Dresden 1937 stamped into the leather. So that's a nice buckle. It's um it's all aluminum construction. Um, it's got a little wear to it. You can see where the uh, the the spade and the swastika are a little bit worn, but that that adds to the uh, realism of the piece. You know it's. It's something that, that uh, went through the period, 
and very collectible. Let's see what else we have here. This looks kind of small. Another real wrap job here. Ah, here we go. Oh, this is stuff that uh, I get a lot of emails. People always wanting iron crosses. And what do we got here? Uh, this is a um, this is a first class iron cross. And um, I don't know whether it's marked or not. I don't see any marks. Maybe I will see it on the. But that's an imperial piece. See, we know it's imperial because it has the Prussian crown at the top and uh, um, Wilhelm's uh, uh, monogram there. And 1914, I think is they're dated, aren't they? Yeah, 1914. Uh, the first Iron Cross was originally uh, invented, if you will, in um, 1813. So that's a long time ago and they continued on all through those years so that's a pretty good uh, pretty good little piece there I like that I like the belt buckle uh, thank you from uh, San Sebastian Puerto Rico now let's see this is from the same person let's see what we have here let's see uh, it says armbands, armbands, please don't use razor blade to open. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and then on the back it says it too. See, that man wants to protect things. Slightly damaged armband. <laughs> yeah, I guess he, uh, he's he been watching my videos and seeing uh, that maybe I'm not the best uh, Razor blade handler here. I'll try. So you're going to use it. <laughs> well, how else am I going to open it? But I'm going to do it real lightly up at the end here. We'll see what happens. If I cut one of the armbands, oh, I'll be mad at myself. You bought it. After being warned. Yeah, I bought it. Now it looks like we're in good shape here. Oh, they're kind of stuck to the other end. Yeah, that's all of them. And let's see what we have here. I'll get this arm and cross out of the way before I wreck that. Now these are these look like pretty pretty good things here. Wow. Wow, look at that uh, veterans. It has the officer's um, tress there. And then also another thing here. So I've never seen that before. I don't know whether you collectors have uh, or not, but uh, that's a pretty classy, um, must have been a high-ranking uh, World War One veteran that wore that one. And it's, uh, oh, it runs all the way around, too, the tress. Yeah, that's in nice condition. It's all wool. Very nice. So I like that. All right, here we go, the next one. Uh, this collector's is a Reichsbahn. Uh, these were worn by the railway police. Uh, and this um, eagle and the Reichsbahn wording is all Bevo woven into here separately. It's not a printed thing. Very nicely done and well constructed. So that's the, and, and not common too. Uh, and then we have a regular uh, veterans armband here. Just the, uh, uh, the regular enlisted men's type. It's got a little moth hole there but it's not too bad. And this is the second style, or the first style, with the uh, war memorial on it. All right, collectors, moving along. Mm. Ah, yes. Uh, let's see what we got here. Pretty good packing. Ah. Oh, there's a nice thing here. There's more in that box, but we'll look at this first. It's like a police. No, forest. No, or... no, it's a it's an army army oh. officer brocade belt. It wasn't even close. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice one too. See the um, the round aluminum buckle and the um, the brocade is still really really good on it, uh, and it's got the um, 
the clasp on the end uh, and also the inside of it is all velvet lined green velvet uh, this is an earlier one uh, some of the ones you see that were made during wartime the uh, the lining is like a green canvas material so this is much more uh, deluxe it's in good shape yeah it's a, that's a very very nice one um, I don't, the buckle is marked on the back. Uh, it's got an Asman stamp yeah, there. It's a big Asman Yeah, mark. big Asman, yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's a very, very nice thing. And there's something in here. Let's see, oh, the assorted buckles. Here's another, another RAD buckle. Really nice. A nice um, Hitler Youth buckle. Yeah, this is some good stuff here. There's another Hitler Youth buckle. This one's an aluminum, aluminum one. This one is um, probably nickel. And uh, still one more, one or two more in here. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Wow. Do you know what that is, Ob? No, I do not. I don't think we've ever seen one. It's we'll a rare to, one, I'll tell you that. It's a pretty rare one, if yeah. It's even German and looks uh, Eastern European. Yeah, I don't know. It's a odd looking thing. We'll have to see. There's a, there's a discolored catch. Yeah. And there is something in there. Hold on, let me just get this one fast. I'm not even sure if that's third right, but... I think it is. Yeah. But, and then uh, they're all... It's a Luftwaffe, the two... HJs and the uh, and the RAD on the back, so they're all they're all pretty good. I'm sure somebody will tell us what this is. Yeah, for you belt buckle guys out there, uh, send us an email yeah, and uh, first clue guy, us in. First yeah. guy gets mentioned in the next video. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, we'll give you credit for that. Uh, I'm sure somebody knows what that is. It won't take long. Oh, I'll find it. But... All right, and uh, it's rare, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, but uh, is it desirable? Yeah, though, you know, some of the rarest things in the world, uh, nobody wants it. <laughs> <laughs> what's, uh, what's the deal? But let's see what else is something else in here in this bag. Let's see what this could be. Yeah. Yeah, double wrap here. Wow, triple wrapped here. <laughs> wow, this man didn't want anything to happen to this. Starting to feel familiar though. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, uh, a uh, a political leader uh, pole top. Uh, yeah, that is what we like to see. See that RZM on there, Rob. I mean, it, uh, it shows some age and some usage, but um, hey, it's a real one, that's for sure. All the blacks out of the swaths. Yeah, they usually have black paint sure. in here, and that's all come out. It's good as good as it could go, though. Yeah, it's still yeah, it's going, nice. and it's, it's got the uh, holes in it for um, mounting it into the, um, into the wooden flag staff. So well, that's some pretty good stuff. Not bad at all. I'm happy with that. Let's see where I don't know what I did with those buckles, but I must have put them back in the box. Okay. Yeah, good box. Yeah, good box. Very good box. See, you never know, guys. It's not just daggers around here. It could be anything. We like it all, and um, of course I. I know more about daggers than I than I do belt buckles, but uh, but still, it's 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 fun to get a little bit of everything, and and as I uh, begin to handle all these other things, I'm starting to get to know them pretty well too. Uh, once you buy some and they're not real, you start to learn <laughs> real quick. You guys know about that, don't you? I told you before, I. I am not perfect and 
I make a lot of mistakes too. Not with daggers, but with that other stuff. I sometimes have some trouble. That's just like when you were trying to learn how point spreads work. I said, well, make a bet and you'll figure it out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, point spreads. I never could get that. I feel this feels like it. Yeah. What we have here. Oh, we'll see. It looks like a small thing in a in a big box with lots of protective wrapping because it must be something valuable. We shall see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these Bob Burns cutters work all right. Is that Miss Debbie over there? Yeah, she's rooting for something there. What are you looking for, Deb? A pennant. A pennant? Oh, boy. Hard to find them. They're all over the place. Wow. Yeah. Sorry about that interruption. Debbie had to sell a a hundred dollar pennant and that comes first you know how business is business but anyhow we're getting to finally to this and uh, uh, this is really a uh, wow uh, boy that's impressive that is one beautiful uh, cigarette case uh, yeah I remember the man telling me he was going to send this um, uh, this comes from um, uh, a veteran purchase where many things uh, coming from the Berghof accompanied it. Um, if you haven't figured out who the monogram is yet, it's um, Albert Speer. And uh, Speer, of course, was uh, Hitler's great architect that uh, designed the Reich Chancellery and the Berghof and uh, uh, the uh, NSDAP building and um, um, Munich and many other things and uh, then of course he was made a war minister during the war um, which he did a pretty good job at too managing to get supplies of course the problem was when you have all that slave labor it's not that difficult I guess but let's see this this is a uh, the patina is just incredible on it let's see how it opens oh yeah here we go oh wow well. oh. Beautiful thing inside. It looks like it's all silver hallmark there. Yeah, that's um, that's really a, uh, a high class uh, cigarette holder. Uh, I think one this size would um, easily hold a whole pack of cigarettes, wouldn't it, Ob? The short ones, just one. More than that. Maybe more. It's yeah. like a four packer. Uh, it's really, uh, it's really, That's really, really nice. in its, um, in its simplicity, it's so elegant. Look at how elegant that is. It just is, uh, just really, really, uh, incredible thing. Well, that, that collector's is not going to be cheap. That's the uh, biggest cigarette case I've ever seen. I think it is me too. That's not a pack. That's a multi-pack. That's a carton. <laughs> yeah. But you know, Spear was kind of famous with his taking the simplicities of things and making them almost look majestic, which is how this is. It's just so simple, but wow, it's uh, it's really, really beautiful. Well, okay, uh, that's a great thing. Uh, what can I say, collectors? I'm I'm thrilled. To, I'm thrilled to have that. Something really, 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 really nice there. All right. Let's see what's going on here. This is another small box. Fairly heavy, though. Oh, this doesn't, <laughs> this doesn't look like daggers, guys. 
Well, I was just saying how I uh, I do like um, cigars, and uh, uh, these really look uh, nice. San Cristobal uh, Cubans, uh, very very nice uh, uh, box of cigars there. So I'll enjoy them. Uh, this comes from my friend Matt. Um, you guys re might remember I had a um, uh, a. 53 centimeter DLV long dagger a couple of weeks ago and I and I sold it for Matt right away so he was um, he's pretty happy so that's a little <coughs> little thank you gift thank you Matt I appreciate that very much okay Matt's Can also nice? Matt's also in the uh, I'm assuming it's Matt that's in the uh, being that seminar we did? That's Matt, yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. Janowski, yep. Yeah. He, um, you collectors can remember we had a seminar on bayonets about a year ago. Remember Matt's about 10 stories high <laughs> and uh, standing next to me I look like a uh, uh, a little shrimp. Okay, we'll see what we got next here. We're moving right along. So far, so good. Everything we got so far, I like, Ob. Yeah. Yeah, everything looks looks pretty good. Boy, that cigarette case, though. Wow, that's that a killer. <laughs> that is really a killer. Let's see. There's a, some kind of dagger in here. Yeah, just one piece. This is now. Oh, looks familiar. Oh. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, you all know what this is. It's a Red Cross skewer. It um, it's not in the best of condition by the looks of the. The paint and all, uh, paint's almost all gone on the back and well it's got a pretty good frog on it that's got a D mark on the on the back of the frog. And the fittings, see that D? Yes. Uh, the, the fittings kind of look alright. Uh, Maybe it's got a Damascus blade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's it, yeah. Oh, we may never know. Oh, there it is. Careful. Uh, well, the blade's not too bad. It's got a tiny bit of age in it, but uh, but you know, for somebody that's looking for one of these and uh, you don't want to uh, spend your retirement on it, um, it'll be a good piece for somebody. So I can use that. Thank you, sir. That's okay. All right. Now, let's see, I think I'll, I think I'll see what's in this bigger box here, I'm kind of, kind of curious. It's kind of heavy too. Oh, that's a big one. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. That's a big one. This isn't going to be too easy here. At least it's not filled with popcorn. Let's see, I'm going, to, I'm going to set the box down and try to lift whatever is inside out of it. Oh, wow, well, it's heavy. Oh, boy, this weighs a ton. Yeah. It. Must be those Berghoff bricks, right? Huh? Berghoff bricks. Yeah, Berghoff bricks, <laughs> yeah. That's what it feels like, a load of Berghoff bricks. Well, we'll see what it is, guys. 
whatever it is, it is not light and it's not going to blow away. Yeah. It looks like there's a lot of things in here. Yeah, well. Well, we'll, we'll kind of go through them one by one if we can. Yeah, there's a nice, uh, a nice um, SA uh, that, with that curve and all. It, uh, it looks like it's uh, it's going to be a Sewell dagger, maybe. I like the scabbard. Yeah, it's not that great. It has a little ding there, but well, let's see what it is. Yeah, the blades are not bad. It's a little worn, but uh, yeah, I knew it was. It's a Sewell dagger. It's a J.P. Sauer. So, uh, so that's okay. It's uh, nothing home to write about. But, uh, <laughs> nothing <laughs> home to write about. Yeah. <laughs> I need another Have drink. Another sip, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> okay. And uh, let's see what's next here. Oh boy, this is. A, there's a lot of things here, guys. Yeah, I don't know whether we're going to have time to to go through all of this stuff, but yeah, we got belt buckles and uh, medals, Panzer medals, uh, a um, a mountain badge, and a uh, um, what do you call those, Rob, for the helmets? The pith helmet. Pith helmet. Man. Yeah, and lots of. Uh, Lots of insignia here, all kinds of neat stuff. That's a nice police insignia. Yeah, there's all kinds of uh, cool stuff here. Uh, it's too much to, we'd have to take the whole video to, to show you all the stuff, but you can see it's a, uh, it's a real prime load of, um, of metals and just all, all kinds of things. Uh, so that's, that's really good. What about the helmet? Yeah, I forgot about the helmet itself. Let's see. It looks like it's repainted and it's... Yeah. it's I think it's just a box. That's about all it's good for maybe is just to put that stuff in a box. Uh, well, here we go again. Another one of them. <laughs> a sport <laughs> shirt, army sport shirt. How many we? How many hundred of them do we have, Bob? I don't know. About about twenty. I guess we got a lower price. Yeah. And uh, here's some nice. Uh, this looks like a podium banner, maybe. Yeah, podium banner. And uh, pretty nice one. Yeah. Not bad at all. That's a good one. And. Uh, uh, this looks like a real nice Kriegs flag. Wow, look at this rope on it and all, and it's all marked. Yeah, this is going to be a beauty. Yeah, let's get Debbie for that one. Yeah, Deb, can you, Deb? Can you do this for me? Give me a... This looks like a really nice uh, Kriegs flag. Looks like it's the right size that everybody wants. Yeah, it's the kind that everybody wants. See that, guys? It's a beauty. I don't see any holes in it. Looks perfect, doesn't it, Deb? Yep. And then on the other side, yeah, it's got all the... Oh, it's a marine one, too. It's um, it's marine marked, and um, uh, it's a 100 by 170 size flag. And it's got the uh, maker name on it, too. It's got everything anybody would want. It just... Uh, these are, we sell probably of all the flags we sell, we sell the most of these kind because collectors really like them. Yeah, that's good, so we can use that. Let's see what else is in here. More flags, oh boy. This looks like a vehicle. Whenever you see these grommets, it's a vehicle ID flag. I don't want to open that all up, but, uh, and then here's a nice, uh, wow, that's a real nice pennant. Look at the fringe on it, isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, and a nice armband dropped out, Hitler Youth, uh, 
a wool party one. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of really nice things here. And this must be a gigantic flag underneath. It weighs a ton and it's huge. So we'll we'll pass by on that one for now. But you can see guys there's a lot of uh, a lot of um, good stuff here that's going to take uh, some time to um, to go through and um, and price it up and all. Um, it looks like um, somebody's whole collection is kind of what it looks like to me. Yeah, um, there's one other thing in, in with this all these goodies here. Um, I thought this was kind of interesting. Ob liked it. It's um it's a straw case here and it. Sort of has a Japanese look to, sure to it, doesn't it? And and you take this out, and uh, believe it or not, it there's a mint um, Japanese uh, flag. I mean, isn't that? I mean, it's all silk. Yeah. Doesn't look like it's ever seen the light of day. Probably because it's been in that. Uh, <laughs> When you think of, yeah, I like that. Uh, it's a good meatball flag. Yeah. Not a rising sun, but a nice meatball. No, it's a very nice uh, meatball. That's I think that that's right original name. to it, that case. Huh? I've never seen a case like that before with a flag no. in it, but it sure does look original. Yeah. But what do I know? I'll fold it back up again as best I can. and. See if I can get it in there so it doesn't get screwed up. But that's that should be uh, that should be something somebody would like. Uh, it just shows you what um, things that are properly stored, how well uh, they can be preserved. Because that silk looks like it was made yesterday. I mean, it's really, really incredible. So uh, that was a good thing, whoever. And I just wonder whether uh, uh, this was something that I'm uh, missing some ties there. What's that? Some ties are hanging out the side there. Oh, okay. I'm not sure I have it in the right <laughs> compartment. Maybe it goes in it this compartment. It was meant until you touched it. Um, just put it away. We'll figure it out later. Yeah, I think it's it's in should go in this one, yeah. but we'll figure it out. Okay. Just thought you guys would like to see that because I, I think it's kind of interesting. Um, let's see what else we got here. These look like dagger boxes to me if I ever saw one. Yes, sir. Ten with a little popcorn. Oh boy. Maybe not too much. I hope not. Well, there's a letter, and uh, well, I like the bag. And here's another one. I like that bag too. A couple of returns. I don't think so. And then there's something here. So let's see what they are. I know you're saying, come on Whitman, open the bag. I am, I'm going to. Just need some courage. Ooh. All right guys, here we go. Here's the stuff you love. In backwards once more. Yeah. Yep, it is, isn't it? Sure is. It's numbered too. It's, uh, yeah. It's got uh, numbers up here too. And numbers there. I don't know. I have Let to study all that. Let me see the upper cross card better. Can you see it in there? Uh, aren't there numbers there? Um, I'm sorry, Dad. I don't think there are. No, okay. 
too many drinks. <laughs> just one here. That's better than there's less confusion. Nice scabbard, good anodizing. And like Ob said, guy put it in the scabbard backwards as usual. Oh, wow. Nice, uh, nice blade. Really nice. Uh, it's a Kotlib um, Hemisphere with a serial number. So that's that's pretty cool. That's a very uh, very desirable piece. Uncleaned, untouched. Blade, um, blade looks good too, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. Is the throat numbered? Sometimes they are. No, well, no. The number's here. If it's on here, if you won't you won't see. Well, you could. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. The front of the blade's nice too. Look at that. Yeah, it's a nice dagger. Yeah, that's that's a very good uh, SS dagger. Really to, solid too. I have to look that one up. Yeah, I will. I will. Yeah, that's that's a beauty. Yeah, that's a good dagger. Let's see what's, what's in this bag. Oh, here we go. This is a wow. That's it. Looks like a pack scabbard. Looks like pack fittings and so forth. Grip. I don't know, there's, that looks like a, a pretty deep cut in there. Could be icorn too. I don't know, it's a nice thing. Nice anodizing. Yeah. Beautiful grip. Yeah, very nice. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a choice, uh, choice blade. Very, very nice blade. And we'll see who the maker is. Yeah, it is an icorn. I thought they'd recognize those icorn uh, accent grooves. This would um, this would be a ground broom, even though yeah. it doesn't look like it. This was factory done. I've told you before, collectors, whenever you see this, um, it's an early double oval. the early mm -hmm. small double ovals like that, that was the mark they used for Rome inscription daggers. So it's a uh, it's a very nice thing. Sometimes they'll have a number underneath them. Yep, there you go. Number four there, the mm -hmm. inspector number. So that's a nice um, classic Icorn Ground Room factory job. Beautiful. Um, the factory redid the back perfect. You would never know it was a room unless you know by the trademark because it's, it's done by the factory. Another, <laughs> nice stuff. another really nice dagger. Let's see what was in this separate thing here. Oh, wow. Oh. Just a loose, um, a loose scabbard. It's got some dings in it and looks like it was repainted, but it's an early scabbard though and nice early hanger and, well, something for the part spin. We can always use stuff like that. Okay, and uh, and this next box is from the from the same collector. Uh, so we'll see what's uh, what goodies are in here. I hope they're as nice as the ones in the last box. Do you like those daggers, collectors? Those are um, you look a long time to find. Uh, uh, pieces like that in that condition and uh, uh, as long as I've been in this stuff like that still gets my heart beating a little bit. So does this. Mm. Let's see. Uh, more, uh, more popcorn to deal with. And Oh, here's another another bag that I like. Yeah. Oh, this bag I don't like as much, but it'll do. <laughs> Terrible one on that stuff. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's something in this box too. So let's see what let's see what we have here now. Yeah. Well, open the lousy bag first. 
Ooh. <laughs> Another one up. Backwards with the number. Backwards. In the scabbard backwards. But look at the grip. Yeah. Beautiful. <clears throat> Beautiful. And the, and a serial numbered. And the anodizing is perfect. Yeah, it might have had a vertical one at one time from that little sure. rub there. That yeah, nice blade. Yeah, it's, yeah that's, that's nice. And let's see who made it. Uh, it's a ground uh, ground room, and it's made by Hemisphere. You do see a lot of SS daggers where they have serial numbers that are ground rooms because they originally had the full room inscription on them and Rome had ordered that the recipients of those daggers um, put serial numbers on them and um, the order came out only about a month before he was uh, eliminated uh, so only about maybe 30 percent of that work got done but um, but it's not unusual uh, to see a, um, uh, a Rome dagger, ground Rome with serial numbers. So that's a good thing. Wasn't that bad of a bag, was it? Well, we still got one more, don't we? Still <laughs> well, got one more no, to go. I mean this case. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that case of, didn't do justice to the dagger. Let's see what we got in this one. Ooh. Yeah, here we go. The dagger's in backwards. This guy's got more numbers than a phone book. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Wow. Wow. With the early hanger and nice, um, nice anodized scabbard. Beautiful, um, um, Nickel fittings. I love that uh, yellowy glow that they have. Uh, let me turn this thing around here. Oh, beautiful blade. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're really nice. Yeah, that's a nice. Uh, that's a nice dagger. And uh, uh, this one's a ground room also. This one's a herder. But um, super pieces here. Uh, we'll have to look them up and see if they were the numbers belong to officers. But uh, if not, as I told you before, there's always a chance in the future we'll be able to uh, discover those the identity of those guys. But um, but boy, that's a that's a real butt kicker there. That is a uh, <laughs> that's a nice uh, that's a nice dagger. Well, all four of those were pretty nice, weren't they? I wonder what's in here. Shall we look, guys? Ah, what the heck? Yeah, let's look. Let's see. Whatever it is, it's pretty light. I still don't know what. Oh, 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 this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I believe I, I sold this to this man. Uh, several years ago and I kind of miss it I think it's phenomenal it's a watch fob SS watch fob with the uh, skull medallion just fantastic it's also silver hallmarked I believe and uh, uh, that is a really really great item you like that Ob? yeah I remember this piece yeah how can you forget that piece? Let's see what it looks on the other side. Uh, oh, skull on the other side also. Yeah. It's the same on both sides. Where's the hallmark? Right up there by the... I think I see a hallmark, don't I? Yeah. Oop. Yeah. Yeah, that is, a, that is a killer. That's one of the neatest little artifacts to survive <laughs> there is. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Galen David 
turned this up 40 years ago, something like that. And it's um, it's been passed through a couple of collections over the years. Uh, it really ought to stop here at Whitman. I'll tell you, that is, uh, if I let it go it again, I probably won't get it back. Now I'll think about it, but uh, wow, that's, uh, that's really a... Uh, <laughs> A nice thing. Well, I guess that uh, I guess that ends up our um, our boxing for this week. Unboxing. Um, boy, those last four daggers, huh? They were. Uh, those will. Uh, they're all so nice. They'll keep you up at night. Wow. Even the SA is a beautiful thing. It's got some. Um, some really nice grain in the grip too, like a burl or a tiger. So, so that'll uh, that'll do it, guys. And um, thanks again for um, for watching. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. We uh, we bungled around a little bit, but uh, all in all, uh, some pretty good stuff came out of it. And I'm sure we'll have. Um, all these things to offer you, except maybe not that uh, that watch, Bob. That that is uh, that's a hard one to part with. But anyhow, take care, and uh, we'll see you all on the next unboxing.